So Guy, I'm really excited to catch up with you here in Copenhagen at DTW Ignite. I guess help us set the stage. What's real, what's hype in terms of operators' AI efforts? Thank you, it's, it's great to be here today. Um, the question of hype. Uh, we hear a lot about agentic AI, agents, gen AI, all of it is coming. Uh, some of it is used to augment people with productivity. Some of it is used to augment processes by providing machine learning analytics. And some of it is actually agentic, which is autonomous, well, you know, call it, a, uh, call it ha has a brain and can operate on its own. Um, we hear a lot about it. Um, it, it looks like uh, it's a convergence, a unique time of convergence of compute and, and process and, and algorithms that are making it happen. However, um, if we want to think about it, um, whether how much we're adopting versus how much we're not adopting, I would say that um, we're doing a lot of Gen AI, we're doing a lot of uh, productivity gains, we're augmenting people, giving them tools to be more productive. We see some uh, applications of machine learning, AI analytics as they augment processes like in call centers for customer care. And we see the beginning of agentic experimentation at scale. One thing to note is that agentics is now going to a new phase where agents are giving birth to other agents and collaborate. And that is going to signal somewhat of an explosion of, of autonomy. And that's something we've never seen before. So I would say that, if I have to say, we do a lot of productivity. We do some growth in terms of augmenting processes, and we are definitely experimenting a lot with Agentic, and we can see them coming slowly. So you use the word experiment and experimentation. I, I guess the observation from my side would be that there is a lot of experimentation going on, and that's very healthy, but how do you get from experimentation to scaled production? What are some of the hurdles that operators need to clear to really drive value? That's a perfect question. Um, and um, before I answer this perfect question, I would like to say that the telcos, the CSPs, we are so well positioned to take advantage of all of that. We are data rich, we have operational excellence, we are distributed, we've got sovereignty solved already. So there is no reason why we cannot move from experimentation to production so quickly. But in actual reality, that's not what's happening. We almost trip ourselves, if you want to say, you want to call it this way. So we've got lack of business clarity. We've got uh, a real hard time to move things from experiment to production and more than 50% of the actual experimentation fail. And the reason is there are uh, several blockers which we've identified through conversation with our members. And there are five major blockers. The first one is readiness. Looks like it, the very, very basic stuff, people can't get a program running as easy as it looks like. You know, you don't know who to call for the first kickoff meeting. Um, financial justification, how to calculate an ROI when you do a Gen AI for a network operating center, which is really good. How do you calculate that? In reality, that network operating uh, center person used to do six things. Now, with Gen AI, they only do two things. How do you calculate the benefit of these four things you've just saved? Um, not to mention operational and architectural solution estimates, operational acceptance and engineer accelerators, all are there and we're all chipping on them. So these are five things that we just need to get moving and resolve those blockers. And that's very, very important. Um, as we look at, at, at those, these are actually the delivery challenges that we have. We've got leadership challenges around the business clarity, but most important, there is the AI first technology adoption. That's where we actually have to start integrating all these agentic gen AI into our systems. And that's not easy. And we find that a lot of people trip there and they don't know how to start. And we've identified four things that are actually four questions that CSP should ask themselves in order to integrate agents, agentic, and all this future back into CSP. Question number one is how do I get the right data to the right agent? Most of the telcos are trying to access the data, and I call it don't boil the data ocean, because they go in and just try to solve and reconcile 20 data stores, it's terrible. It never succeeds. Instead, turn the arrow up, curate, 
the data you need and you'll be able to do a minimum viable data for your minimum viable agent. Second question we find out in that integration space is how do I get the right tool to the right agent? Those agents wants to call your network management system or your element management system. You can't just do it. We've got we to export the tools. You've got to have security. You've got to have guardrails. Simple, but just needs to be done. The third one is how to get the right model to the right agent. We all like our models, some like from vendor A, vendor B, vendor C. But if we let each project do this, we end up in, we end up in, in a terrible mess. It's another spaghetti to solve afterwards. So how do you get those models in the right place and serve them? And last but not least, question number four is how do you monitor, govern and secure interactions between agents and agents and agents and people? So four questions, the right data to the right agent, the right tool to the right agent, the right model to the right agent, and monitor the interactions. And we believe that if those four hygienic level questions will be able to be resolved, that is where we open the floodgates to all these use cases to start moving from experimentation to production, in parallel, of course, to providing the accelerating tools to solve the delivery issues. So in my conversations with CSPs, it's clear to me that they're feeling a lot of pressure from the board level, from the C-suite, to go do AI and to go show results from AI. And in their efforts to do that, it's sort of shining a light on some underlying issues around their data platforms, around their cloud strategies. So I'd be curious to get some perspective from you, and this maybe speaks to your point about readiness, but is the cloud piece ready? Is the data piece ready? In, in essence, everything is ready. This is no time to invent. It's time to do. It's time to connect the dots. It's time to actually use what we have. Part of the problem with the experimentation and the cloud is that, and then the level of readiness, is that we have silos. And AI and data is a horizontal play across. The natural tendency of, CIS, of, of the natural tendency of CSPs is to deliver real fast, and because of the complexity, they like to deliver in silos. But that's a very big risk for us. It's not about technology debt that we are going to create. It's about data debt. We're all used to the concept of tech debt, and, and tech debt on its own is, is exactly those silos, but you can get over it. It's a financial practice. The data debt is much worse. Once you start getting the data locked in into a certain silo, it's very hard to move. So I would say everything is ready. But this is a different game. It is a change of ways of working. It is a change of the ways we actually gonna operate. Therefore, it's about connecting the dot. It's about curate. It's about using the cloud in a smart way. Give you a really important example for my four questions. Getting the right model into the right agent. It's not about the cloud there, and it's not about the model. It's about an old problem. We all experienced that when we went to cloud with cost control. Those models have tokens. Those tokens cost. Who's going to pay for it? If you let every project run with their own, what, they're going to do an API to their favorite, and run out of budget, and ask with a credit card, and it's not scale. Um, when that happened with cloud, people had bill shock from, from cloud providers. So you do want to have model shock from model providers. Everything is there. We have to do it right. We have to get that model right. We've got to get that data curated. We've got to get the tools exported. And if we do all of these correct, we'll generate the scale. That's our message, AI at scale. That's what the mission is here for to do. And that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on very pragmatic enablement of this scale. At the technology level, AI adoption, at the delivery level, AI for everyone, and at the leadership level, which is all about the business language and the simplicity of it. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that business language and leadership angle, because uh, you know, as you mentioned, all of the pieces are there. Telcos are in a very advantageous position to go do AI from their you know, data, from their distributed infrastructure, from everything else, but it is this way of working, right? You need to not just break down technology silos, you need to really go through a, a large-scale change management exercise, right? That is a perfect 
perfect question, and then it is at the heart of it. AI, unlike um, functional areas of a business, is everyone's. And so it is the business of the CEO. And without CEO backing, or without the focus from a CEO to make sure that it happens across the business, it, it tends to become silos and delivery of projects in different departments. And so when you think about the language, what we really need to do is to enable the CEO to plan. And so I'll give you an example on that. Um, if you just think about uh, it's the simplicity of allowing the CEO a very simple decision tool to manage a conversation with the chiefs about the AI roadmap without going into technology. And if we manage to enable that, we would actually open the conversation to be more financial in nature and allow the CEO to actually have priorities done without becoming the expert in technology. So might I say, take the buzzword bingo out of the boardroom and actually put financials instead. So let the CEO understand as a chief, what are you doing in AI? Are you changing people's lives are you changing processes? Are you changing platforms? People process technology, we all know that. What are you changing? Can you please describe that? Then, tell your CEO, where are you going to do that, at what stage? You're going to experiment, you're going to trial this, and you're going to deliver that. Be clear. And third, tell them how you plan to do it. You're gonna buy it, you're gonna partner it, are you gonna customize or shape it or deliver it yourself? Build. So these are not new. People process technology, experiment, incubate, innovate, build, buy, partner. All building blocks the management room knows all too well. We're gonna connect them together and make them relevant to AI so the board room and the chiefs can actually describe a planned roadmap without having technology in the way. Well, you and your colleagues at TM Forum are doing a really good job developing these frameworks and then applying them in the real world. So I appreciate the work that you're doing there and I appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with our audience. Thank you, it's my pleasure, thank you.